Hey everybody, Tim Brzezinski here. In this screencast, we are going to take the confusion out of auxiliary objects in GeoGebra. And I'm going to quickly show you how you can use the concept of an auxiliary object to your students' advantage with respect to discovery learning. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can, so let's get started here. And um, so the question I had, I mean, I know what auxiliary objects are, but the thing is, it's hard for me to kind of describe them. So uh, to be quite honest with you, all I did is I just basically Googled the definition of auxiliary, and this is what it said. Providing supplementary or additional help and support. So I'm like, okay, well, what the heck does that mean in GeoGebra? Well, I'm going to show you here in GeoGebra's 3D calculator, for example. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do here, let's just do something basic. Let's make a cube. Right. Under basic tools, we'll go to cube. And I'm going to plot a point, say, at 0, 0, 0, and I'll put one at 4, 0, 0 right here. Right. So cube AB, deselect that. Right. And so see here. Now you'll notice here, right, that, let me just drag this over a little bit. You'll notice here that it says cube ABC, its volume is 64, that's the value, right? But there's only three items shown here. The point that I put, the, the first point, the second point, and, you know, 64. So it's like, well, what the heck? I mean, why um, aren't there six faces and there's other vertices, FGH? Well, see, those are hidden, but those are called auxiliary objects. If you want to see those, say I want to see, I mean, granted, if this is 0, 0, 0, right, and that's, uh, and that's 4, 0, 0 right here, I should have my, my students should be able to deduce that, well, C is 4, 4, 0, right? So I don't want them necessarily see it. Now, some kids know to click here and go there, but at the same time, if you want to see, for some reason, if hypothetically you wanted to see everything here, the way to see all the objects, all the hidden auxiliary objects, the supporting objects, go to settings, scroll down, go to settings again, and then um, go to this little cubic looking funky symbol here, algebra tab, show auxiliary objects. If you click on that, It'll show everything here. Notice a cube is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six faces. The area of each face is 16, right? Not that I want my kids to see that right now, but there's a bunch of edges, right? There's 12 edges there, you see, right there. And so, oh my gosh, you know, each edge is length four. Again, and there's the vertices, all right? So, but it's kind of nice that GeoGebra hides these things so we don't really necessarily see them. But let's do something else here. Let's actually make a net of this cube, all right? So the net, just touch the net tool right there. It's clicked, touch the cube, and voila, there's your net. Deselect that tool by clicking on the move arrow. I could drag this up and back, and if you go back to the algebra tab, you'll see that this slider does the opening and the closing there, right? And so what else, what else am I going to do is I'm going to uncheck the cube, right? And I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to uncheck the cube there and see I can hide that, so I kind of make it look a little cleaner once it closes, if that makes sense. But now, so... The thing is, I, have, I, I see the cube volume and I see the net, and this value is actually the surface area, right? But I don't want my kids seeing those values. So what I can choose to do is make those auxiliary if I want to as well, like so they don't show up in this view right here. Now I'm going to just quickly uh, right click on point F here, and I'm going to go to uh, see how it's auxiliary. But I'm going to uncheck show object there, click on H, uncheck show object, E, I don't want them to see that. And I think there's one more here, G, right click settings, uncheck show object. And so those are gone now. But you know what? I can choose at any time to make, let me just hide the, you know, I could put that there. I can actually hide the label here. Um, and I can actually hide, uh, go to B here. I can hide the label and the value. Why not? So I go here, for example, right? And let me just go here. Now I can actually choose to uh, uh, go to this, see how I click that segment? That segment's an auxiliary object. It is shown in the, in the 3D graphics view, but it's not shown in this algebra view, right? Which I don't want to be. But I'm going to choose to show the value here. And I could actually choose it to have color black, say, right? To make it stand out a little more, if that makes sense. But now, I'm going to actually right-click on the axis. I'm going to hide them. So all I have is that plane right there, if you will. Okay? So I can see that I have a cube of side 4. But when my kids open this up on their devices, they're going to see this too. I don't want them to see. So if I can actually choose to make this auxiliary by clicking on the little snowman right here where it says cube. Click on the snowman, right? Go to settings. And, whoop, and so, oh, it took it off. Go here, go to settings. And I'm going to choose to make, oh, that's point R there. It's clicking on, sorry. Let me just click here. Click on the gray thing. Go, and I can choose to make the cube auxiliary and see how it hides it. Click on the net because I don't want my kids seeing the surface area. No, no. And I'm going to make that auxiliary too so it hides. 
And all my students have now are this and this. I can actually choose to hide these if I wanted to, right? It doesn't really matter. But you see here, I can actually now open and close this cube at will. And I could also move this point right here. See what I mean? How it goes kind of like right there. We'll put it back to four. Uh, whatever. I can clean this up a whole lot more. Show the label. I can hide the label here. Well, the... Oh, hang on a second. Oh, that point. Yeah, at that point, oh, I was on the net there. That's why. So settings, and I'll hide that. So now... I'm ready to say, and so this is the, the resource that I want my kids to play with when, you know, when we're working with this here. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to hit save, right, and I'll save it as sample cube for screencast, share with link, save, down here at the bottom it says saving, saving, saved successfully. That's a beautiful thing. So now when my kids come in to work on this, they're not going to see any values of surface area or, or, or volume. They're just going to have a cube to play with and they're going to have to work together to figure out the total surface area, hypothetically. Again, I'm keeping it very basic here. So just a second leave. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my GeoGebra profile here. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to get out my tablet so we can actually see what it looks like as a student in my class or your class or whatever. There it is, right? So um, we're going to take uh, GeoGebra 3D uh, calculator here. We're going to close it out, swipe it up. So we open it afresh. There it is. There's my GeoGebra page. And see how my profile page right there, it's, I can click on what I just made right there. Sample cube for screencast. And the important piece I need right here is this seven-digit URL in the code there, PSM. That's the resource ID. So if I go to open up the graphing calculator right there, I can uh, basically uh, go to search and type it in. P, whoops, sorry. P, in this case sensitive, P S M B, in this case C N N W. Return. Oh, hang on a second. No search results. Let me close it out again. Let me reload this. Sometimes it takes up to 30 seconds. Again, not a big deal. But um, there we go again. So I close it out and we'll go back to the calculator. Search P, what was it? PSM, BCNN, W. There it is. It just, took a, it just took a second. There it is right there. Okay, so I go to sample cube for screencast. That's what I just made before, like, five, like two minutes ago. And so now I can look at, and look at my tablet. See how my students, when they open it on their phones or on their tablets, all they're going to see is this. Yes, the slider B does that. I could also drag one of the grade points by going right over here, say. But now, uh, for students with this, where, where spatial issues are, uh, are an issue, we can actually look at it in augmented reality. And so there it is. Yes, we can jump inside of it. Woohoo! Go back. But right here, um, we can open it up and explore. And now I ask my students, hey, you know, can you tell me how to find the, the total surface area here now by seeing what you just see? Now, many students can just see it and say, uh, duh, it's six squares. So find the area of the square, 16, multiply it by six, and there you go. But there are some students that, uh, that I won't be able to see that just by looking at it on a textbook page or whatever. But so here, why not give the kids the quick opportunity to just play with it for themselves and see and um, have them simply discover how to find the surface area of, in this case, the one of the most simplest 3D solids, a cube. Right? And so by, by an auxiliary object, by hiding that value there, they now um, won't be able to see that. One, uh, just one little FYI on devices, if you go up here to the settings gear, right, and go to algebra right over here to the, to the, to the right there, see what I mean? Click that. You can actually turn them on. And now if I go there, see how I see everything? But again, you can hide stuff in the algebra view by making them auxiliary objects. And so you can, at certain cases, hide what you don't want your students to see by doing that very thing. So uh, yeah, I hope that, uh, hope that helps you out. And um, yeah, I wish you much success. Uh, you and your students a lot of success with respect to uh, discovering mathematics. Best wishes for a successful start of the school year. Many of you started already, and uh, lots of you are starting this week or after Labor Day. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, dynamicmathsolutions at gmail.com. Dynamicmathsolutions, all one word, at gmail.com. Uh, if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe uh, to the channel here. A lot more coming in the next few weeks. So I'm Tim Brzezinski. Thanks for watching.